Hello, my name is Jason Miller. This is my YouTube channel, Alex Now Solutions, where we attempt to unlock the power of ServiceNow. Uh, one of the strategies that we use to help you uh, understand the tool better is to go on to the ServiceNow community and explain different topics uh, that are either questions posted by users or concepts um, brought to you by developers um, on the ServiceNow platform. And we try to do it through video because we feel that it's a better mechanism for explaining how the tool works and also showing you how the actual um, records behave in the system. So without further ado, today uh, we're going to be talking about, uh, there's this post here uh, earlier this year about, um, actually this is last year by Nigel Bell, excuse me, um, service level agreements and the FAQs. And specifically today we're going to talk about the difference between the default and simple SLA condition rules. Um, some of you who set up uh, SLAs might be very familiar with the difference between default and simple, um, but a lot of times I, I feel that uh, this is kind of something that um, has not been uh, very well um, explained through actual examples in the tool. And that's what we're going to do today is talk about four different types of SLAs um, that were created um, using the two different types um, of uh, condition bases. So we have here default and simple, and uh, they do a very good job of explaining um, the condition types here that you can pick, either default or simple, and how they're supposed to, to, to run the different rules. And default is basically saying um, the start condition needs to match and the stop condition does not match. And then it goes on to say, you know, for Helsinki or later, which is pretty much everyone at this point, um, unless you're one of the laggers that's still on Geneva, which is fine, um, then uh, the cancel condition does not match also. So that's one thing that needs to be taken into account. Whereas simple, we're just saying here, look, just roll on if the start condition matches and then we'll worry about um, what happens later um, when, it, when we get to the, the finish line or when the stop condition matches. So that's basically what needs to happen. So, um, and again, you know, most everyone's, uh, I feel, is probably on Helsinki or later at this point. So we want to note here that the cancel condition um, cannot be used with simple. And I'm going to show you now the four different SLAs that I've created and show you the behavior in the system um, when we... Uh, trigger these SLA definitions um, off of the start conditions. So we'll take a look at um, our four here. So I called one default, uh, not very creative, and then default does not fire, and then simple, and then simple, but it fires completed. And basically, this second one and this fourth one are the same thing with the difference of the condition base, and then uh, uh, the default and the simple here, they're basically the same thing with the, with the difference of the condition base. And one thing I wanted to point out is um, I, I took a Jakarta instance out of the box that you're not going to see here um, on the SLA definition form, uh, for whatever reason, the um, actual field that, um, that, that triggers that, that, that makes that, uh, or that you can select from to create that different uh, condition base. So if you wanted to do that, you would just go into the uh, configure form design, and then you know you'd go ahead and add that field there. Okay, so then we'll we'll move on. We've seen our four definitions here. We'll notice here the condition type we have here: two default and two simple. So for our first one, we have here default does not fire. Uh, we can look at our start condition. Very simple. Impact is medium. Uh, we can look at the simple one too. Impact is medium. Uh, pause condition, I don't think I put anything in there. And then for our stop condition, we're basically saying that when this incident state is not new, meaning anything other than new, any one of these down here, and the assigned to is not empty, then it should stop. And then for our default, we're saying incident state is not new, assigned to is, is not empty. So now we'll, we'll open up an incident over here. Go to incident that do. And we'll open one of these up. So we said here that all it needs to do is have this impact equals two. 
we'll check our start condition again. Great. And one thing I want to note here is that we're going to put in the assigned to because sometimes that's what the, the service desk would do, right? So we'll go ahead and put that in. Let's see, we just want to assign it to Fred. Right, click Save. And let's see what shows up at the bottom. And we'll notice here that our state changed to in progress. This is the default system behavior. Um, this is what it does. So that's one thing that you would have to take into account is what does your instance or your company's instance do? What is the, the natural behavior of it? So when we scroll down here, we'll see here, sure enough, simple, it fired, completed. Um, and we'll notice here also that, look, the start time and the stop time were exactly the same. Um, this is a zero second SLA. To me, this is kind of worthless. But um, believe it or not, you'll see definitions kind of set up like this to say, hey, look, we want to fire on all incidents because we're targeting the incident table with an impact of two. And then we just want to know when it's not new anymore, meaning it's in progress and it's been assigned to someone. So we want to kind of um, get that understanding of what the amount of time is on that. Now, the, the, the problem here is um, the default, if you're, if you're putting um, these as stop conditions, um, then you're, it's not going to fire at all. Because remember, the default is saying this, this start condition has to be true and the stop condition has to be false. So <clears throat> you either have to do one of two things. You have to train your staff <clears throat> or modify the form to not um, move to automatically in progress. Um, or you can take um, one of these con conditions, maybe make it a little bit different, maybe the inverse, and put it in the start. So maybe you would say assign to is empty in the start condition and then try to fire it. But I'll leave that up to you on ha how to handle that. Now, the simple condition, it did fire, but it fired completed. Why? Because the incident state was not new, even though when we started out, um, we didn't touch anything with the... Um, with the actual state itself. If you re rewind it, um, this video, you'll see I didn't touch anything. It basically just changed on its own because what, the, what it's doing is it's stamping basically that, that database entry state with in progress and it's noticing that the assigned to is, is Fred Luddy. So at this point, um, it says, hey, look, all the stop conditions have been met. So we're going to start and stop and then we're done. So that's, that's a good example of how these two um, same exact conditions uh, can have different results in terms of the, you know, the, the output there. So then that'll take us to defaults um, and simple. Now, one thing I did was, and I really, you know, I'm a big advocate of not using state in the start conditions. Um, to me, there's just a lot of things that later on, you might think it's a good idea, but for some reason, uh, people who integrate um, ServiceNow into their environment, later on, they want to state for every different little thing. It's in progress, on hold, it's resolved, it's pending supplier, it's pending vendor, it's pending customer, whatever. Let me just give you one clue here and that, you know, we always have this kind of classic battle of, you know, when you should put things in pending um, in a certain environment, but... I think ServiceNow has this on hold reason here for, for you know, that there's a reason they have this on hold reason. And the reason is they don't want you clogging up state. And also remember that state is an in integer. It's an integer value. So if you ever <laughs> create a state, a second state that has the same integer value as the other one or number for, um, it'll, sometimes it'll create funky situations where records will become um, active when they're inactive um, for whatever reason. So I'm not a big advocate of, of adding additional states. I think that's why they create this on hold reason, because if you want to get more specific as to the reason why this thing's impending, you can always select one of these. Anyway, let's go back to our definitions. Sorry for my little rant there. Um, we'll notice here we have a start condition. Impact is two. Assignment group is not empty. And then we'll see here state is one of either new or in progress. Did I put a pause condition here? Yeah, I did. So I put in on hold will be the state. And then um, here I put down stop condition, incident state or state is resolved. And then for our simple, 
um, I put down pretty much the same thing. So all three of these are the same in the start condition. Let me scroll up here to prove it. Pause condition, on hold, and stop condition. And one thing that's nice is that this gets grayed out as one to cancel. So it's basically telling you, like, look, you're using simple right here. This is one clue that you're using simple, that you, you'll see this grayed out in this little message right here um, that you're simple. So, like, let's say you're using it on another form I referred to and um, the actual condition type wasn't there. Uh, you would know really quickly uh, what condition type you're using. And, you know, so, some uh, firms or entities, you they basically create their own condition types. <clears throat> so you, you can also go that route, too, if you have specific situational um, uh, items you want to take into account. Uh, so anyway, right now, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and open up one of these. Um, we'll just say, I'll open up a fresh one. Say, incident that do to open up a new one. And let's see what we had here. We had here, impact is two. Uh, assignment group is not empty. Make it software. And then state, I'll put it in progress. Gonna hit save. And we'll see if they fire. Hopefully they fire. Okay, so we have our one here that is in progress. Um, and then we have these two fire. And now let's see what happens when we put this thing in hold. Now remember we put down a pause condition of on hold for default. And right here we have pause condition on hold. And let's just see what happens. Oops, not result. Scroll down. Looks like our default canceled. Hmm. Why? The reason why was because we put in our start condition that the state is one of new or in progress. And see right here where it says when to cancel? Start conditions are not met. So the default is saying, hey, look, I, I know the pause condition here is on hold, fine, but you're telling me here start conditions are not met. Now with the simple one, it's basically saying, hey look, start conditions are not met, but also that's grayed out, that means nothing. Cancel conditions can't be used, so your pause condition, um, looks like it got grayed out here, um, is legit, so it can, um, it can keep running, no, not a problem. So in fact, Let's do another one because it looks like that state is not in here. State is on hold. And we'll do one more. And what I'll do is I'll mark this one. Uh, the simple fire is complete. I'm going to mark it inactive. Simple fire completed. And I'll save that one. Oh, I'm sorry. We did have the right simple one. Sorry, I was hitting the wrong one. But let's just run one more, and we'll wrap up after this. So let's just review here. Two medium. And what do we want here? Assignment group is software. And I'm going to start out as in progress. Now this will be a little bit cleaner for us to see. Okay, so we have uh, default and simple in progress, and then when we put it on hold, let's see our related list, and we'll see here our default gets canceled because that cancel condition um, was available and uh, we didn't put in individual cancel conditions. So the simple says, hey, we don't even use cancel conditions, no big deal. So we'll keep running. And then if we put it back into in progress, you'll see what happens. And this is probably a big deal um, if you have um, suppliers um, that are in a service level agreement um, to meet 
uh, the date, or, you know, the breach date. And you'll see right here, another default fires. Now look, our start time is about a minute off and then it pushes out the breach time. So it canceled the first one. So if your organization just um, basically cancels out all the uh, canceled ones or just filters those out when they're running the SLA metrics, that could have a big impact um, if this thing is constantly being put in to on hold and then back into in progress. So you're using this, this example here. One thing I like to do, and I did another video um, on the Alex Now site, um, was uh, did another video on reporting in general. So I'll look at SLAs by stage, um, and I just used a very simple um, condition here, you know, created this month or last month, and then maybe I want to see, you know, like maybe 30, maybe 10% of them being canceled is a high number. Uh, you know, it's just something that you have to, um, as an organization, think about. So uh, I think we covered uh, a good amount and showed a couple of records there in the, and demonstrated the behavior of how um, the simple versus default condition base uh, can be um, fundamentally different in terms of uh, the, the, the metrics that you produce um, out of uh, SLAs. So as I like to say, I, I believe we just unlocked the power of ServiceNow and I uh, wish you a good day.